So let me go to the word of God in the book of Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endure to all, say generation, that's me. Somebody say amen. Not my grandfather, not my grandmother, not grandfather, uncle, it's me. Somebody say amen. In John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus answered and say unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our door with him. Verse 25. This thing have I spoke unto you, being yet present with you. Verse 26. But the comforter which is in the Holy Ghost, which the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to you remembering. Whatsoever I have say unto you, the verse 22, the 23, but the hours come and now is when a true worship shall worship the Father in the spirit and the truth shall seek in such a worship him. Verse 24, God is a spirit and they that worship him must be worship him in a spirit and the truth. The pastor bring this last week on Wednesday night. So tonight I want to talk to you a simple thought. God is spirit. God is spirit. Spirit is God. Somebody say amen. Let's go to the Lord. Father, we come before you tonight. This flesh, our mind, our body is always fighting you as a spirit. We pray tonight, God, to give us the revelation and understand. You already paid the price. You already gave us your word. You already offer everything you came to do. But tonight, I pray, God, anointing your word. Hide me behind his pulpit. Use my mouth, my mind to speak your word tonight and help your people people tonight uh, so they can understand uh, what is all about God is the spirit and God open the door and pour down your anointing in the name of Jesus we pray come on let's give a hand clap for the Lord tonight <laughs> tell God he's a spirit say like you mean it tell God he's a spirit so the reason why I came with this thought because in the end time, if the church don't understand about God is a spirit or the spirit is God, they will fight the devil wherever they go. They will fight your past. The thing uh, is already under the blood. The thing uh, you already know God is already forgiven. Oh, the enemy is going to throw at you uh, if you are in your flesh. But let me remind you, uh, if you understand the God you serve, uh, it's in the spirit. There is nothing uh, like what we fight uh, is in the spirit of God. Somebody say Amen. So the Bible tells us uh, this generation have mercy everlasting. Uh, the truth endure to all generation. The church need to understand uh, if you don't have the spirit of God uh, and God uh, is a spirit, you are praising yourself to allow God to be in the spirit inside of you. You will go with through things uh, you never been there before. Huh. Somebody say amen. We are in life. The reason why we're going through something because we praise God with our lips, but our heart is far from it. We praise God with our mind, but our heart is far from it. But let me remind you tonight, when God is a spirit, there's nothing too hard for him. In the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. The understanding. The spirit of counseling. Oh the mighty spirit of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is upon them. 
I'm going to give you a little revelation here, okay? When God is a spirit, there is no sickness, no trial, no temptation. Oh, come on. No, none of that is in the spirit. Because God never made himself to go through what we're going through. God never made uh, himself to die. God never made himself uh, to go through a trial you're going through every day. It's the flesh. It's the one uh, It's fighting the spirit of God every day. And sometimes when the a, when a flesh is rise up, the spirit's going to stand by and look at you. See what you're going to do about it. See, sometimes uh, we need to step in uh, what God is saying. He said, every last in life, wisdom and knowledge, uh, give it to the church. We need to exercise in our mind. When God saved you from the world, he cleansed you like a wild snow. Yeah. He's not just cleaning halfway. It's not clean you because you're going to be saved on Sunday. And Monday you come, you act like the enemy or adopt yourself the thing of the world. You got to understand when the spirit of God is inside of you, he's going to lead you and guide you to all truth. And there's something you already crucified on the cross, buried in the water baptism, in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's you never coming up anymore. If you understand. God is a spirit. A church of the end time. Brother Haney said this. Pastor writing that book of the, the wave of revival. Do you believe the God you serve on Sunday morning? Do you believe the God you serving on a Sunday night? Do you believe the God you serving on a Wednesday night? Do you believe the God you serving every day? And Brother Henry say, if you not get a hold of the Spirit of God, we are going to go through something we never see before. And this is the time of the church to rise up and understand that God you serve is no longer to be in the flesh. It's in the Spirit. <laughs> the person tonight is a good example. They try so hard. They get you. They get in that spirit. They get you in that worship. The pastor put in last week. Oh, the spirit of worship. He should be going with you. He should be with you. Wherever you're going. When the devil come around, worship God. Remind him. No matter how my body acting up. No matter how my mind is taking place. I'm going to worship you. And some of you think, oh, I'm going through something. Quit complaining and quit claiming. Give it to the Lord. <laughs> Whoa, well, I feel the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says this. This is, this is really good. I'm going to try to help you. Come on, Jacob. I'm going to use you. See, Jacob is in the flesh, all right? But Jacob is the only one to understand about the God he served. It's not coming. Like Jacob, it's not coming like a, you and me. It's coming through as a spirit. So the spirit is in Jacob, but Jacob fight the devil. But the spirit is helping him. The spirit of God is protecting him. The spirit of God is covering him. The spirit, he fight the devil. But somewhere Jacob is going to say, God Give it to me. I'm going to fight with you. See, sometimes our church needs to hold up enough. When you come on a Wednesday night, you know you come to the house of God. You come with God. Allow God to be in you. Not your job. Not somebody out there. They give you a bad phone. Before you come to the church, you got to be in the spirit. Because he is the spirit. Thank you, Jacob. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Somebody say amen. I'm going to read some scripture before you criticize me tonight. Somebody say praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19. So shall the fear of the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rays of the sun 
when the enemy shall come like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I want to help you tonight. I'm really going to help you. You need to ground your walk with God with our doctrine. See, sometimes the reason why the enemy is trying to have a liberty over you because you do all other stuff but you not understand our doctrine. What is our doctrine in the apostolic movement? We believe one God. Beside him, there is no other God. And that God means one. But that God have a name. His name is Jesus. Somebody say amen. You cannot cast the devil out if you talk about God here, God there. But you can cast the devil out when you understand the revelation of who God is. And what is his name? It's Jesus. Somebody say Amen. You got to understand where we come from as the apostolic driving church. We need to quit to please the world and try to be the world. We need to tell them what we believe in. Tell them there's only one God. Beside him, there's no other God. The God you serve is a spirit. Somebody say amen. We got to believe God, Son, and the Spirit, they're one. They're not three. His name is Jesus. Somebody say amen. You got to believe. You got to repent it and baptize in Jesus' name. Fill with the Holy Ghost. You know the devil know how to be a slick. Oh, I baptize in Jesus' name. But why you not act like it? Look, when you have blood over your hand, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And when a, a lot of you in church have a blood over the man of God's hand, it's a battle. And when you fight the devil, it's attack him. Because you try to do your own thing rather than to follow what we believe. And what did he teach? It's crazy. It's easy when you tell the kids, you're a rebellious kid. But you are the one who's rebellious before God. And the rebellious is a sin of a witchcraft. Somebody say amen. So you got to understand. you got to go through repentant, baptizing Jesus. And if you don't tell somebody. We've been witness to people left and right. You know what the excuse is? I'm saved. I don't need that God. So I just touch my hand, my feet, and give it to the Lord. You don't need to worry about it. Let God deal with it. Another thing we got to understand about the, the God in the Spirit. God in the Spirit is a fresh breath of God. In the Bible we call it, it's a fresh breath. That's what the Spirit is. So when we come to church, bless God's heart for the praise team. They're speaking that breath of the Holy Ghost to the congregation and you're sitting on it, that breath, because your dog have a flu or maybe your cat had the COVID uh, and you used to excuse uh, in a church uh, because your day is bad. Why are you not standing up and say, praise team, bring that song over my shoulder. I need it. I fight devil all day long. I fight the enemy all day long. I'm in the house of God. Bring that spirit over me. In our weakness. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Ooh, this is exciting. I'm excited because I feel it. Pastor, somebody told me this morning. They wake me up at 2 o'clock. And I say, man, if you're, not, if, you're not, if, you're not, if you're not God waking me up, I'm not going to get up. But the phone starts ringing. And I say, maybe God want me to pray. Then I pick up the phone. It's some... House is flat with water. And they say, God, you fix that for me. I'm just going to take a little nap. I got to wake up early in the morning. So when I say that, God said, pray. And I start praying. 
And I never felt the Spirit of God came through that place I sit in this morning. I feel my hair standing up. I feel Chris Palm. And I never even see who, who God is and this morning. But I can feel the Spirit. See, God wants us as a church to feel that Spirit when you come to this church. Somebody say amen. So when he moved in there this morning, I get down my knees. The first thing I do, God forgive me for my laziness. God forgive me if I'm not paying attention to your spirit. And God gave me a word this, this morning that says, son, if you want to survive at the end time, you need to sacrifice your desire, sacrifice your flesh, sacrifice the thing you wanted to do in the world, but turn yourself completely to me so I can be used to you in the end time. Church, there's a word. The pastor puts a message, I think a couple months ago, if you are in the spirit and worship God in the spirit, you should should be walking in the spirit and the spirit is supposed to be going to you but the challenge we have the church we get used to everything in the day oh Sunday night was good but there's Monday coming I gotta get up in the morning I gotta go to work I gotta all these things develop inside ourselves to grade the spirit in us what and allow God to be his spirit to overcome what thing is going to our life somebody say amen and I know you, you could be questioning a lot of things tonight, what I'd say. But what I say is try to help you how. I don't care how bad the schedule is. If I'm in the spirit, I can conquer these guys. If you're not in the spirit, you cannot conquer your flesh, your mind. How many of you, you are here in the church on Wednesday night, but your mind is not here? How many already know Peter Pickle? Oh, he preached like an hour. How many of you already figured out Peter behind this pulpit? That is the spirit. It's trying to destroy what God is trying to do in the church. Why we not just behind, get behind when a pastor make a decision and uh, we're going to be going. We always get behind to whoever is going to stand and do the work of God rather than us create a spirit of division and try to come against us and a spirit of jealousy. I have something to tell you. If you're jealousy what I'm doing in this church, sorry, you need to go to God because I'm not coming here to create a jealousy. I'm come here to demonstrate the power of God and live inside of me. I come here to remind everybody around me. The God I serve, he raised the dead. He delivered people. He baptized people. I'm here to demonstrate what God already done. God is a spirit. And this is another thing I'm so excited about. It. Wherever God is going, I want to be there. Pastor, I don't have nothing in my blood to refuse if you ask me to go to New Mexico and preach. Because I know who I am. I know what I've done in the kingdom of God. I know the sacrifice I already gave it. If the pastor called me in the midnight hour to go to the hospital, I will sacrifice the sleep, what I do at the walk to do what God is doing. Some of you, oh no, that's Brother Joe. He has no clue what he's saying. It's true. There's people watching right now in the, in the internet. <laughs> they, they're watching right now. Because I don't care what they're watching me or not. If they're not repenting and baptizing in Jesus' name, I feel with the Holy Ghost, they'll miss out what we have. When you gonna get excited if God is in the spirit? When you gonna get overcome the thing face you every day if God's spirit? 
This is quit parry thing you go with you in your heart. Rip it out huh? and make something out. I'm going to tell you something. What I saw a preacher and his wife a couple months ago. They go through something in their life. They attack their church. I say, brother, make a campfire behind your house. Burn that fire. Write it down everything people done to you. Whatever take place, and name it and turn in that fire and see what God's going to do. Somebody say amen. They sing it about the fire. That's what we need. We need a fire. But if we're not in the spirit, we never got to get a fire. Matthew 28, verse 18, 20. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, Our power is given unto to me in heaven and the earth. Go ye therefore, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, this is a script that confuses a lot of people. And I have a Trinity of people that are watching me tonight. Because I know Trinity is not in the Bible. One God... Uno in Spanish, touching someone, God is one. And if you want the truth, you got to go to the Word of God. And there's only one way. There's no other way. Somebody say amen. So here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really finish that. So Jesus gave you all power and all authority. But why are you sitting on it when God is moving the church? Why are you sitting in the presence of the Lord? How do you know God's going to use you to walk around? The first step is going to create a deliverance. Second step is going to create a miracle. Third step is going to create a plan of salvation. Somebody you're praying for. The other step is going to create a spirit. Somebody get the Holy Ghost. The second step. Why are you sitting in the presence of the Lord? It's because it's Wednesday night. It's because it's Sunday night. Or it's because God Lauda is preaching. Woo! Somebody say amen. That's not what we're here for. We don't need to sit in the presence of the Lord. Because the Bible says God is a spirit. But when he breathes in, he breathes. Verse 20. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you always unto the end of the world. Jesus is here, but not in the flesh. So God is a spirit. Spirit is life. Somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. God is a spirit. He have a personal with him. We have a relationship with Jesus. Are you going to have a relationship with Jesus when your days go good? Or the money, the pain, or whatever you have? I got something for you. Whatever you invest in this world, it stay here. Somebody say amen. amen. But if you use it for the kingdom of God, you experience it for the power of God. Mark chapter 1 verse 5. And say the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, he and believe the gospel, the good news. Somebody say amen. We need to become as a body of Christ and understand the Spirit is here and God is a Spirit and the Spirit is God. And He's a person. I hate to bring your name out, Pastor. But one thing, I always, when, when I'm in the Spirit, I can see things in people's life, I shake in my head. <laughs> I do. And I say, oh boy. If you just learn how to bring in the Jesus, you're going to be the most affecting person in the end time. Well, then you try to hold it on. And some people, they bring it in here and take it back to them because somebody's not preached the word to touch their heart. Listen, 
if your heart's not touched in the word of God, that means you're sitting on the, on, the, on the spirit of God. That means the spirit of God is there waiting for you to step in on. Somebody say amen. They're supposed to be exercised the gift and the kids supposed to be manifested inside of us. But the challenge we have, we came here with the problem and child and the same thing we're thinking. It's not okay, but God is inching you. Come on, let me in. God is a person. He have a relationship with you. It's not going to do things like what we do. He do things like he wants to do. Somebody say amen. So when he's a person, that means he's already do his part. He came here for one reason only. He came to share the blood for the forgive and sacrifice for our sin. For it's no longer to be here. There's people out there that say, accept Jesus Christ to be your personal savior. And you say, no, that's not in the scripture. Somebody say amen. Oh, you don't understand, Joe. No. I say one. God is not a materialistic person. It's not. It's a God of eternity. And I'm going to close with this. Bring that right there, brother. God is a spirit. We bring the whole paper. This is how God is. You see this rock here? It's represented that eternity. I'm going to show you what God is trying to show to the church at the end time. Somebody say, man, this is eternity. It's bigger than the world. It's bigger than the thing is going into your life. Go ahead, Matthew, Father, Christian. <laughs> Somebody say, man. See, this is how God look at in us. It's called eternity. And this right rope here, that is his spirit. That is him. Somebody say, man. So if you look at this, how blessed we are, if we have eternity, it is ready for us. Why are we caught up with a little stuff? Oh, God is going to do something greater than we are if we understand what God is trying to do. Bring me that. Thank you. See, God, this one right here is like a, the earth. This is the world. This is how small God look at the world. And this is what he looked at. So this is how we look at the world. This is how the world is ready for us when we leave this place or he come back. This is eternity. So God look at this little world. And God, when we see, we look at towns, we look at cars, we look at jobs, we look at people, we always see this stuff here. It's a small compared to why is the church not see that and exciting to live for God rather than they cut up in the thing of this world? Money, nice car, nice home. This is how small it is. Compare eternity. He said, I will offer to the church. The way you look at the world, he created. This is how small it is. But you look at eternity. So why? Are we spending our time to think about the world and thinking about things? We're spending our time with it. 80%, 90%. Oh, I gotta make money. Oh, I gotta, I gotta have a car because if it's not, I'm gonna be in Paris because it's a dream car. Oh, I gotta have a nice home. Oh, I gotta have all these nice. This is how small it is. But if you just look at eternity, it's bigger than what the devil is trying to throw at you every day. Somebody say amen. And all this thing will stay here by eternity. It's bigger than what the devil is trying to do to us. That is the reason why 
our pastor, our minister, that people understand how the price to pay when the end of your life or the Lord is coming. It's about how big the eternity is, rather than a small about the home, about your career, about your life. Listen, I have a lot of education, but I'm not using none of that because I've learned the value as long as God provides to pay my bill enough and I'm ready to be used by God and do everything because I learned how big the eternity is and God is a spirit. When you see eternity, you see how big God is. But why are you spending your time for this little world? Why are you spending your time for all the things of the world. It's worth it to look at eternity. Who hold you back to get the revelation of eternity? It's because your kids not going the way you want it. That's not the way God want it. You need to learn how to put God in his territory. The world is small. The thing you're going through is small. But look at eternity. It's bigger than what you're going through in life. Come on, church. This is what we're looking for. It's eternal. It's bigger than the world. It's bigger than what's going on in your life. That's for the reason. Every pastor, every ministry, they know the truth. They preach their heart, their sweat, their skin, their body, because they see eternity is bigger than the world. They see eternity is bigger than your home, your car, your job, your career. How those things are small compared to eternity. It's waiting for the church. It's waiting for us. I'm here to tell you, God is a spirit, and the spirit of God is upon me, is upon you, is upon the church. Let's make up our mind to let God know eternity is bigger than the world and myself. That's how God is. And Pastor, I am ready. I told God, don't, don't take me yet. I got a family to save. I got a son to raise. And I told him, as soon as my son get the Holy Ghost and live for God, you do whatever you want, God, but not now. You better tell God specifically what you wanted. Look, church, and look at the world. And we try to please the world every day. We try to adapt a thing in the world every day. Because how small the world is. And look at the thing you focus every day. Oh, my. Oh, my house. Oh, my car. Oh, God. My kids. Oh, my grandkids. This is how small it is. So you're going to last eternity because the world? Yeah. I encourage you. Reevaluate your walk with God. Eternity is bigger than everyday life. Pastor, I'm going to say this free word. I mean, that chicken's come up, your sister Erica. We are going to stand. And pray for all of you is under the sound of his voice. When you made it to heaven, you're going to look at it. I don't know if you're going to high five us to the pastor or high five to somebody when you make it. I don't know. <coughs> somebody told me the other Why are you high five and shouting? Because I don't know what, how the heaven looks like. I got to pray right here. I'm going to pray here. I'm going to let the world know. I don't care what it's doing now. I'm going to let this whole thing to let go. Because eternity is bigger than the world the devil tried to throw it at me. Eternity is bigger than everything I wanted to be accomplished. I'm here to let you know, church. 
don't last eternity because the world don't last eternity because the theme of this world. Oh, come on. We need to make up our mind. God is a spirit and the spirit of God is upon us.